In this video, we're going to take this Mac Mini and give it the storage upgrade it deserves. We're going to be taking a look at this Orico Mini Tower, which is a combination docking station and storage tower, which is going to allow us to add a bunch of capacity to save all of our files, keep them safe, and move them back and forth to the Mac Mini nice and fast. So let's check it out. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. Today we're checking out this mini tower SSD docking station from Orico. Orico sent this out to me to check out and to review. And as always, no money is exchanged hands. This review is my review only, and Orico doesn't get to see the video before it's published. So now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at what this thing is. It is basically exactly what it says here, a mini tower docking station. We can see it's got some ports right on the front here. And we've got a large tower here to hold a couple hard drives and an SSD also. It's going to give us some options on how we want that storage to show up. And we'll check out all those different options. And we're going to load this bad boy up with a couple hard drives, which will allow this Mac Mini to focus on what it does best, which is blazing fast speed. And then we'll let something else take care of all the storage, because as we know, these Mac Minis don't come with a lot built in. Now previously on the channel, we have reviewed this Orco docking station, which looks vaguely familiar to what we're going to be looking at right here. Just obviously adding a bunch more storage to it. This one had one SSD drive that popped in on the bottom here. And then it had all the ports that you need up front. And we're going to check out what ports this has and take a look at the configuration for the drives. So let's start off by looking at what kind of drives we're going to be adding to this. So this docking station will allow us to add one SSD in there, and we are going to be using an Orico 2TB IG740 Pro industry grade NVMe drive. This thing is going to be blazing fast. Orico sent this along with it so we could test this out. So thank you again to Orico. And we're going to be able to have, I believe, a 10 gigabit connection between the docking station and the Mac Mini to access this NVMe drive. Now, in addition to the high-speed NVMe drive, we're going to put some bulk storage in here also, and I've got two of these Seagate Iron Wolf. These are basically NAS optimized drives, and these are four terabytes each. So we have a couple options on how we set those up, if we're going to set them in RAID 0 or RAID 1 or JBOD. And then there's one other way that we can set them up. So we're going to take a look at all those options, and I'll describe briefly what the advantages of all those different options are. So we're going to have mass storage, we're going to have fast storage, we're going to be able to move stuff back and forth between the different drives inside the tower and between the tower and the Mac Mini itself. This is going to be awesome. Let's go ahead and open this up next. All right, let's take a look at what came inside here. Obviously, we got the tower itself. We'll take a look at that in just a second. We also got the power supply here, which is going to plug into the wall. We've got our host cable here, and the host cable is listed 40, but I did double check. This is a 10 gigabit interface that comes and goes from that tower to the computer. We also got a longer cable. That smaller docking station I had from Orco came with the same thing, and this is a USB-C on one side, and then a USB-C or USB-A combo on the other side. And this is nice because, remember, this thing looks like a Mac Mini, and it's designed to match this Mac Mini, but it doesn't need to plug into a Mac Mini. We can keep this thing plugged in real close there, and then when we want to transfer these files to another computer or laptop or whatever it is, we can go ahead and use this longer cable, plug it in, and we can use this with Mac, Linux, Windows, just about anything. In addition to that, we've got an NVMe heat sink and thermal pad, and then we got a little bag of little tiny screws here, and I'm sure that's to get the hard drives, the three and a half inch drives, into the trays in here. So speaking of the trays, let's go ahead and take a look real quick at this nifty top here, and this is just magnetically held in place. Got a couple of magnets on here that hold this. Snap it right down, keep it nice and secure. But underneath there, we've got the two drive bays here, which just slide right out. And then we'll be able to install our hard drives in there. Got a couple of screw holes to mount them in place. And then we'll be able to just slip those back in there and plug them in, have them ready to go. Now let's look at some of the ports here for the docking station itself. Of course, we've got a TF card and an SD card, a full-size SD card slot there. We've got a 10 gigabit USB 3 port. We've got a regular USB 
A, which is going to be regular USB 2.0, and then we've got the power button to turn on the docking station, and then in the back we've got two more USB A's. This would be perfect for mouse and keyboard if you have them plugged in. We've got the power input for that power supply. We got the PC input or the host cable port there, and then here's the dip switches to set the different RAID modes, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But obviously back here also we've got a little drive bay here, which is also held on by magnets. That's pretty nice. And that's going to give us access to our NVMe slot, which looks like it's got holes for 2230, 2242, and 2280. So pretty nifty. We're going to get this thing all set up and talking to a computer in just a minute. But let's talk about these different RAID modes. Now we've got four options with these dip switches and what configuration that we put those dip switches in, which you obviously want to set before you plug this thing in and turn it on. We'll determine if it's RAID 0, RAID 1, PM slash normal, or SPAN slash JBOD. So let's talk about what these are, and the book does a good job of explaining their benefits. So with RAID 0, you're basically going to have the two drives working together to make their overall speed faster, but there's no protection from damage or data loss. So if one of the drives goes bad, you're going to lose all of your data. With RAID 1, you're going to have basically the data duplicating over the two different drives. And if one of your drives goes bad, you'll be able to replace it and it will be able to rebuild that data on the second drive. So that being said, you're going to have about half the storage. So if you put the two four terabyte drives in there and put it in RAID 1, you'll basically have what looks like a one four terabyte drive. Now PM slash normal basically means you're going to see both the drives in your operating system as two complete separate drives. So it's just as if you had two external enclosures for one for each drive. And then you would have, let's say, you know, a D drive and an E drive if you're using Windows, or you'd have two separate mounted drives in Mac. And then SPAN or JBOD, that basically just makes both the drives look like one big drive. But if you lose one of your drives, you're going to lose all of your data. And it says right on there, thus, it is not recommended. So I think for simplicity, I'm just going to set this up to begin with using the PM or the normal mode. So we'll have two drives in there and we'll be able to copy stuff back and forth between those two drives. And I'm assuming we'll have a third drive show up as well. So let's get some of these drives installed here and get this thing set up. All right, so let me show you what I've got set up here. I went ahead and put both the switches here in the down or off position, and that's to put it into that PM or normal mode. I've got the SSD installed in here and this Orico came with its own little heat sink and thermal pad, so I just went ahead and used that, and it fit in there just nicely. And I've got one drive installed already. I've got the other one ready to go. Now these drive sleds here, these are nice metal. They're not cheap plastic drive trays. That's all metal right there. And once you get where the connection is on the bottom, the opposite side of the handle, the screw holes will line right up. Now I did use my Strabido screwdriver because it's got all the different bits in it and it's got a magnetic tip so I'm not going to keep dropping the screw. It, the kit did come with its own little screwdriver but it's just one of those basic cheapy screwdrivers and I always like to use a Strabido one. I use the Phillips 1 bit for this and the Phillips 0 bit for attaching that NVMe drive in there. But once you get the drives attached to the little trays then you just line it up, lower it down in there. And then once you get it to almost all the way in, you can push down and feel that connector lock in place right inside there. So this was super easy. Got it all set up just in a couple minutes. Slap that lid back on there. We are ready to power this thing up and attach it to the Mac Mini. So let me get that set up and I'll be right back. All right, so excuse the cable mess here, but basically I've got this plugged into the wall now. I don't have it turned on yet. I just booted up the Mac Mini. We're going to be switching over to a capture device in just a second, so you'll see the Mac desktop, and we'll see the drives populate there. So let me start that capture. All right, so if everything's working right, you should be seeing the desktop right now. And right now I don't have anything turned on, so let's go ahead and hit the power button for the mini tower and see what happens. All right, so I can definitely hear all those drives spinning up, and we've got three little pop-ups here that say that the drives are not readable, which is understandable because we haven't initialized them yet so give me a second to initialize them and I'll be right back. Alright so using disk utility I did format all three of those drives and they showed up here on the left hand side. I renamed them Orico 2TB for the SSD 
and then Iron Wolf 1 and Iron Wolf 2 for those two SATA drives. Now remember, I've got this set up in normal mode, so we have no RAID protection right now. It's just two separate drives. Now I also set up the Orico drive as an APFS file format, and then the two 3.5 inch drives I set up as XFAT. Now my idea behind this is to allow the SSD to have all those benefits of APFS and possibly be a little bit faster talking to the Mac and then allow the other two big drives to be backwards compatible to Windows in case you want to move files back and forth. Now you may have a different way of setting it up. That's completely fine. This is just how I wanted to set it up to test now. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to do a couple copy tests. So I'm going to open up this 2 terabyte drive here. This is the NVMe. I'm going to grab three files over here. This is about six gigabytes worth of video. And I'm just going to drag them over from the desktop onto the drive and see how fast these things copy over. Now this is what I call like a real world test. Just how fast can I get stuff from my hard drive or from my computer onto this external SSD. So with that being said, let's go ahead and check that out. Just three, two, one, drop. And this is real time, I would say about 10 seconds, and this is about what it is for every external NVMe drive that I've tested with this 10 gigabit connection, all about the same. So I'm glad to see that this is right on par with all of those. And it'll be interesting to see how that compares up against one of these three and a half inch drives. So let's do the same thing here. I'm just gonna grab the same three files, drag them over onto the spinning disk, and three, two, one, drop. Now this is real time nothing is sped up and I'm saying it's about 30 seconds it said less than a minute when I dropped it and I counted in my head real quick nothing really scientific <laughs> just counted in my head and it was about 30 seconds to get these files copied over on here so still plenty quick faster than a thumb drive for sure not near as fast as the SSD drive so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab the other drive here and just see how fast it takes to go internally from the SSD over to one of the bigger drives. So this is going from the SSD to this empty four terabyte drive. It should just be copying, you know, disk to disk. So let's see how fast it goes in three, two, one, drop. So I can already tell it's going to be about the same, and that's, I'm guessing, just has nothing to do with the interface, it just has to do with the write speed of that drive itself. So again, it's not, not painfully slow, but you can definitely see the workflow that you'd want to do, do all your work on your computer, move it over to this SSD, keep the computer cleaned up. You know, keep the files off the computer. Keep on moving the stuff that you're working on to the SSD. You can even edit right off of this SSD. And then when you've got a final product or you want to put that into cold storage, then just go ahead and drag it over. That way you can drop it over to one of those larger drives and walk away and let it just copy over. Now again, lots of different ways of using this. You could set up the SSD drive just like I did. And then you can raid the two drives either for protection or for speed, depending on your needs. But basically, in just a few minutes, I added 10 terabytes of storage to this little Mac Mini. And the next thing I want to talk about is the volume of this thing here. And I, like I said, I can hear it. Obviously, anytime you have spinning disks, you can hear it. But it's relatively quiet. I wouldn't have any problem with this sitting on my desk right next to my Mac Mini. Or you can even set it right up on top. And I don't think the, the noise level of this hub slash hard drive is going to be any problem for you. But like I said, we just added 10 terabytes of storage to this little Mac Mini, 
It could have been 6 terabytes if we went with the RAID configuration. I'm going to play around with it some more and figure out how I'm going to integrate this into my workflow. And if it turns out to be where I'm going to be using this to actually store backup files, then I will set that up as RAID. But I do have larger RAIDs in the house for storing things for protection reasons, so I may just use this as a way to organize my files as I'm working on them. Now remember, in addition to all the benefits that you get from the SSD and from the large storage drives in there, we also get all the inputs of the docking station. So this can easily be your one connection to your Mac Mini for all of your I.O. use. And then you're just going to need the HDMI cable coming out of the back to go to your monitor and you'll be good to go. But I think that's going to do it for this one. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, I appreciate a thumbs up. That helps out the channel. If you got any questions for me on this device, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Go ahead and check out the links that I put down there on where to find out more about this Orico Mini Tower. I want to thank Orico again for sending out this awesome device to test. I can definitely see this thing being useful in my workflow, so I'm interested in to hear on how you all are going to be using it. Let me know down in the comments below what you would do with something like this. Don't forget to check out the rest of the channel. Lots of other reviews on devices for the Mac Mini M4. I'm also getting some stuff spun up for the MacBook Air M4 which this would also be an awesome device for. So go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. And if you see something you like, watch it. And if you see a bunch of stuff you like, subscribe. But that's going to do it for this one. I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.